Welcome to Electron Online. Well, there are rules and properties that belong to probabilities. And when we look at them, you may say, well, that looks kind of obvious, and I must agree, well, they look kind of obvious, but it's worth to state them and to look at them so that we understand even better what probabilities are. So, what are some of those rules? Well, first, let's define the concept, the probability of event A or outcome A is equal to the number of times that A can occur divided by the total number of sample points in the entire sample space. So that ratio is the probability that A will occur or in this case that A is expected to occur because what actually happens and what we expect to happen of course are not the same thing. Theoretically that's what we expect to happen but practice when we actually do an experiment the numbers will actually typically deviate from the expected value. So some of the rules is as follows. The probability represents a relative frequency, and so that ties it in to what we've seen before, that relative frequency and probability are kind of one and the same thing. It represents the relative frequency. Out of 100 attempts, how many do we expect will be in category A or category B and so forth? The probability that A will happen, or that A is expected to happen, is the ratio of the number of times an event can be expected to occur divided by the total number of trials. So if you do it 10 times, what is the expected number of times that we get a particular uh, event to occur? Three, that the numerator of the ratio must always be equal to or greater than zero. So we cannot expect any negative probabilities. The denominator of the ratio, oh, the ratio without an N of the ratio, must be greater than zero. If we can't have zero total number of trials, then we don't have any probability. You should have at least a one in the denominator. And last, the number of times an event can be expected to occur is always less than or equal to the total number of trials. So you cannot expect that you'll have more outcomes than number of trials. That is not possible. So you might say, well, that seems pretty reasonable. Yes, it is. And it's just good to be able to look at it and go, well, that makes sense. We should not violate those rules. Sometimes what you'll find is that when you sum up all the possibilities, all the probabilities of every event, you don't come up with the total number of trials and then you know something is wrong. So that's how we come to the properties. We have two properties here. First of all, that the probability of an event occurring will be somewhere between zero and one. It can be zero and it can be one, anything in between, but not less than or greater than. And property number two, that when we sum up all the possible po probabilities of any particular outcome, if we add them all up, we better get equal to one. If it's less than one, like I just mentioned before, then something is wrong. This must always be true. Otherwise, we don't have a valid probability setup. So, as long as we keep track of these things and we recognize that these are rules and properties that we must follow, then we'll be all right when we're dealing with probabilities. And that is how it's done.